So the supermarket is up third in my series of location tutorials, and it is one of my favourite early game locations. I hope you enjoy, and I hope you learn a thing or two. So, the first thing to note about the supermarket is that there are two possible versions you could encounter in your playthrough. For this reason, it's worth double checking what the world map says about this location before you visit, so you know what to prepare. If the world map tells you the location has danger, then you are in the soldier scenario, whereas if it doesn't, then you are in the scavenger scenario. Clearly, the scavenger scenario is safer, but the reward and the opportunity that you get from the soldier version is so much better. So, let's begin with that version, the soldier version, as it is the more complicated of the two. But not by much, to be honest. I would recommend sending your best fighter if you are in this version. And if you're not sure who that is, I have a video on combat that you can check out. Once you've selected your best fighter, I would then equip them with a melee weapon, be that a knife, a shovel, crowbar, or whatever you can that will deal damage. And then you send them off to scavenge. Upon arrival, they will state that they are not alone here, and they are correct you will discover the other people present when you slowly walk towards the first closed door you encounter. If you look through the keyhole, you'll see a soldier and a young girl talking. It's clear this young girl is being intimidated by the soldier and that the soldier isn't a very nice person. Thankfully, the soldier is looking away from the door, and so you have the perfect opportunity to deal with him. If you equip your weapon before opening the door, you can quickly open the door, walk in, backstab him before he even notices and get out. The girl will then run away and you have a morale boost for your survivors once you get back home. Once the soldier is dead, you can loot his body for an assault rifle, a load of bullets and some booze. And this is an early location that gives you a good boost in morale and a gun, so it is worth taking the opportunity if you have a decent fighter. Even weak fighters can deal a lot of damage with a backstab with the right weapon, and so if you don't get a one hit kill, the soldier is normally off balance from the first hit and so the finishing blow is relatively easy. So that's the soldier version. The other version is the scavengers. If the scavengers are there, they will work their way through scavenging the looting piles. You have two choices here. One, try and take them all out, even though that is incredibly difficult, or simply be quick. I would always choose the second option, as killing them also gives a negative morale shift that really isn't worth it, considering if you're fast you can get to all the good stuff first. The best loot in this entire location is in the basement, so head down there first before they can get in and take it, and you should be absolutely fine. There is also a very small exploit here that you can, if you can risk a day with no loot. If you enter and see the scavengers, you can leave right away. Then they won't come back and you can have anything you want from your second and subsequent visits. This is probably the easiest method if you can have a no loot day and are worried about losing out on the best items here. Now, what are the best things? It seems that we'll have to pass over to tour guide Andy again to take us through the location and to see where the best bits and pieces are and what you'll need to get them. Welcome to this lovely large property with two floors above ground and a basement, plus a little bit of space around the back. We will start with the spacious car park out front, which would require a little bit of TLC, and then we would move on to the entrance hallway. This is a few trolleys stacked up down below, but also one above that you should really check because there are some nice items that may have been left behind when the previous tenants, well, ran away. The main shop floor on the ground floor has plenty of shelves for you to store items with and some piles of bits and pieces that are more than free for you to take. You may need to clear up a bit, but a lot of these materials are usable, so don't throw anything away. Behind the main building is a pile of rubble and a shipping container. By all means, take whatever you want from here. It appears whoever was staying here is long gone, so it's all free for you to take. Upstairs is very similar to the main shop floor, but there is also some graffiti out on the back balcony that will require cleaning. Overall, this area is good for collecting parts and other useful items. Now for the basement. We drop down into the centre of the basement, and then we can either head right or we can head left. To the left, we have some piles of boxes that may contain some good loot, but if we keep going, the better loot is under the bed at the end. To go the other direction, you'll need tools such as a shovel and a crowbar. First, you'll have to push through the pile of rubble, but then you get to a locked cupboard containing a large collection of goodies that are all yours now, and then you can get some more materials through the other locked door further right. You can also have a handy escape route from this property over the roof if you would like. You can even grab some extra materials from there on the way out. Hopefully, this property has piqued your interest, and I look forward to hearing from you soon.
And that is all from me today in this location tutorial series. So please like and subscribe if you found anything useful and check out my other tutorials for helps on other things.